Hello everyone. When I got back from my holidays in Malta during the summer, I switched on the telly. And a news report was emerging regarding the SQA, the Scottish Qualifications Authority. The Scottish Qualifications Authority as a body responsible for issuing awards for examination pass. And people tell me it's very, very important. You will recall though that during the pandemic the exams were cancelled so teachers in Scottish schools were invited to hand in estimates based on evidence of what they think the pupils would have achieved so this was done the SQA applied an algorithm to these uh, estimates to avoid grade inflation grade inflation is something that I will return to later it's something that's always interested me now the fear would have been that there might have been some unintentional bias going on in some schools. That perfectly accept, perfectly understandable. So the algorithm was designed to perhaps look at the estimates and try to peg them as close as possible to previous years. And this was done. The problem was the algorithm didn't tweak the estimates downwards, it did not manicure the estimates downwards, it took a hatchet job to the estimates. It was more like a siding action. 125,000 estimates were downgraded. The problem is this so, it was mainly the schools that do not do historically well in SQA examinations that suffered the most from this algorithm. There's a rather pernicious problem in Scottish education called the attainment gap. People think the attainment gap in Scotland is worse than it should be, or it's worse than it ought to be. And that's a, that is an issue in itself that I return to. Anyway, when the boys and girls from uh, the low achieving schools received their results, they found they were a lot less than what their teachers estimated. At this point, we have got a scandal on their hands because it seems like the algorithm was prejudiced against the lower achieving schools. This is a political nightmare and an embarrassment. The boys and girls had clearly been taught in a democracy and they demonstrated their democratic skills and democratic methods very effectively indeed. They rallied in George Square with very effective posters, very effective posters. Indeed, if I had been asked to come up with a poster that would cause maximum embarrassment and have maximum impact. I could not have come up with a poster more effective than the boys and girls came up with. They seem to be saying this. To what extent are our social justice principles that we, that we hear daily on the television and in the media, to what extent are these dearly held social justice principles mere, rhetor mere rhetoric? There's a charge and a half. But that's their perception, and they responded accordingly. Trust the teachers, not the algorithm. This is a postcode lottery. These are explosive things. And we have got a major political embarrassment on our hands. This is a disaster of gargantuan proportions. This is Scotland. Nobody believes in social justice more in Scotland and we seem to have designed an algorithm that is designed to downgrade the achievements of the boys and girls from the less affluent schools. Trajectory kick. Oh dear! Oh dear! That can't happen! Well, I'm afraid it did. When it was pretty clear that authority figures involved in this process were on a hiding to nothing, a U-turn was inevitable. And the U-turn did in fact take place and the boys and girls were given exactly what their teachers did. Everybody in the teaching community can be proud of these children. Clearly they were taught democratic principles in line with the citizenship element of our curriculum. And they demonstrated these democratic skills very, very effectively indeed. You could add well, no, all schools were downgraded by the algorithm. Some schools in Scotland, when they received the results, 
they noticed they could very, very closely correlated to predicted results. And that would look like that their assessment practices were spot on and could be 100% trusted. Good assessment is one of the most complex aspects of a teacher's job. It requires clarity about what evidence of learning counts as success and the skills to secure that evidence in ways that do not distort or compromise the process of learning itself. Thank you for that, Professor. We all agree, I am sure, on the complexity and the importance of assessment. Well, I think you should find that the sophistication of assessment practices throughout Scotland should be largely the same. We're all subject to the same influences, the same accountability and the same advice. In 2011, when they brought out Curriculum Crick for Excellence, I said just a new set of courses, we needed a device on how to deliver these courses. Now there's plenty of advice on that, and one of the papers they produced was this one here, a, a framework for, for assessment, a 62-page document. The people who are responsible for putting it together and for endorsing it are here and on all the different institutions endorsing this and who will ultimately make sure that we heed the advice and also at the back there's a bibliography to help our professional learning in the future with this particular important pedagogy. But not just that, we've got the National Improvement Framework as well. Something started in 2016 and each year they have a, have a wee update and one of the key components of that as you can see is assessment. So when it comes to the sophistication of our assessment practices, it must be equal. It must be equal throughout Scotland. And indeed, I can confirm that I've worked in both schools. I've worked in schools in advantaged areas, and I've worked in schools that serve less advantaged areas. And I see no difference in the sophistication of uh, assessment practices in either of these types of school. Firm of their assessment is a key pedagogy in education, if not the key pedagogy that underpins so much of what we do. What do you think, Professor? Assessment is too often relegated to being the Cinderella of professional learning. Now this is actually a rather surprising observation. The professor is basically saying when it comes to assessment practices, we're not paying it the respect it deserves. In fact, it becomes the least important thing, in his observations, it's the least important thing when it comes to our professional learning. And given it's professional learning that will ultimately drive along improvements in Scottish education, that's a bit of a shocker. And it invites a few questions. To what extent is assessment practices across Scotland equally sophisticated or equally unsophisticated? To what extent does the ramifications of ignoring assessment pedagogies reinforce the attainment gap? If we have relegated assessment practices to the bottom of the pile when it comes to professional learning, what have we promoted to the top of the pile? What do we consider to be worthy of our professional learning? And to what extent does Scottish educational culture contribute to that? Numeracy, literacy, health and well-being, interdisciplinary learning, active learning, dialogic learning, digital learning pedagogies as well. Do they make up the top of the pile when it comes to our professional learning or do they join assessment practices at the bottom of the pile when it comes to how we see our professional learning? To what extent does that statement hold? And what about the leadership figures in Scottish schools today? The people with decision-making capacity, the people with status and those who earn the most money. To what extent have they been chosen 
for their mastery of the whole array of pedagogies, and to what extent have they been chosen for their understanding of the politics of education, the business side of education, the promotional side of education, the presentational side of education, if they have been chosen for their understanding and mastery of those presentational areas, as opposed to mastery of pedagogical areas, then what are the ramifications for the progress of Scottish education as a whole? I ask you, and when Professor Donaldson makes a statement like this, we need to pursue deep cultural change at all levels in the system. We know exactly where he's coming from. My next video shall be on another matter in education, and that will be uh, posted shortly. Meanwhile, I want to give the last word to the professor, and this comment should be seen in the light of the upcoming exams this year, where we have to estimate again, and we have to estimate uh, reliably. As we move forward, it'll be vital to ensure that schools and teachers are able to apply best practice and assessment both within day-to-day -day teaching and learning and as part of improving the validity of qualifications.